Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the second video of the beginning or getting started with React. And um, in the last video, we went ahead and installed all the dependencies that we needed for React to be installed. But now we need to go ahead and set up Webpack so that it works. So what we need to do is create a new file that we're going to call the webpack.config.js file. So this is just a JavaScript file. And I need you to just take in this and, and uh, and copy this. So if you pause this video and just copy this word for word, um, this needs to be here because what we're doing is we're telling Webpack how to use Babel to compile J JSX code and turn it to regular JavaScript using React's library. So it needs to have all of this stuff here, otherwise it's not going to work. So after you pause that, I'm assuming everything's fine. You'll notice here that it's referencing a JS folder. So Let's go ahead and create our new folder now that all of our JavaScript is going to be put into. Inside this JS folder, there's going to be an app.js file. And if you'll notice in uh, the Webpack config, when we look at this, you can see this JS app.js. So this is going to essentially be our starting point. So here, let's go ahead and add a variable x equals, uh, we'll just do an array, so cat, dog, donkey. Johnson. All right, um, so here's those are the three things. And now let's go look at the web config. So now we have the app.js defined. And what this is going to do, it's going to take everything in app.js and it's going to bundle it all into one bundle.js file that we're putting right here. And it's going to put it inside the root directory. All right, so that's good. Now, in order for this to actually be able to work, since we did not install anything globally, you can see it's all just local dependencies. In order for this to run, we need to actually edit the package JSON file to run our Babel and Webpack commands from this scripts subcategory here. So let's go ahead and add that now. So we're just going to simply say Babel, and then we're going to give it the Babel keyword, and then we're going to add another one for Webpack, and then we're going to say Webpack. All right, so now we have all that stuff set up. So if we go to our command line, we can now say npm, and we're going to say run. And then we give it the actual script name that we want it to run. So we want to run Webpack, since Webpack is going to compile our, our app.js file, and it's going to create a bundle file if everything goes well. So now you can see Webpack is actually running through npm. So now you can have this isolated dependency environment, which is really helpful to use because you may have, if you'll notice on this particular project, since we're not referencing any sort of global package, like look at this uh, React DOM is 15.2, but what happens if you had one directory that all projects shared for React DOM and React DOM updates on, a, on one particular project and, and then completely screws up five or six other projects? that's when you run into a dependency nightmare. So I don't like to deal with dependency nightmares. I like things to be isolated. If uh, I come from the, the Python virtual environment type of you know, setup where I like to have things nice and concise and not conflicting with one another. So by doing things this way, I really feel like it, it, doesn't, it doesn't conflict with anything. Now, one thing you're gonna notice here is that this did work and it emitted the bundle.js file. But one thing that's gonna be interesting here is that it didn't exit out of the program. The reason why is because if you would have copied the webpack config like I had told you to, you can see it says watch equals true. And what we want this to do, because we want to just run this watch command one time, and that way any changes we make to app.js, it's going to recompile. And you can see a bundle.js got put here. Uh, but if we went ahead and we made a change, and we say, you know what, I'm going to make it um, uh, cat Johnson. And let's watch what happens if I hit save. Anyway, you can see, just take a moment and look at this. There's only one change here. So when I click save, the watch directory, notice it picked up the, the save, and now there's another emitted version. So now we have Webpack working to our advantage. All right, guys, so now we have a golden setup, a setup that will make you rich and get you to fulfill any sort of dreams that you ever want to fulfill in programming. 
In the next video, though, we're going to get into actually writing some React code and, and, and watching it all work through bundling and, and Babel and all that other good stuff. So thanks, guys, for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more stuff like this, and I appreciate it, and take care.